Hi. Uh, in the previous video, we learned two keywords, uh, the, home, uh, the heterogeneity and endogeneity, two, two important features of the causal inference model. And uh, we are going to, and as, as I said, we will not assume that the treatment is randomized. If it is randomized, then analysis is easy. And we are going to study two different uh, setups. One is conditional independence assumption, and the other is the instrumental variable setup. Uh, both are already maybe too, too obvious to you because you already know the, already learned the endogeneity problem. But let's, there are a few additional wriggles to this model based on the potential outcome framework. So we first, we will think about uh, conditional independence assumption. Conditional independence assumption can be understood as uh, we have additional or uh, we have covariates x uh, in addition to e and y. So we observe additional covariates. In most cases, there are covariates. So we have treatment and outcome and covariates. And then uh, if D, we say conditional uh, independence assumption is that Ti is, uh, Ti is statistically independent of Y0i and Y1i conditional on X almost surely. So for almost any X, the treatment is randomized uh, with respect to Y0 and Y1. So maybe I think I, I have explained it earlier. Uh, similar, this assumption, is, uh, this assumption is also known as many different names. Selection on observables. In economics, usually we call this selection on observables, particularly in labor economics. Uh, this is a common name, and on confoundedness. Uh, it means I don't know whether, which field uses this one. Maybe statistics. It means that there is no confounding factor. So there is no hidden factor that causes the endogeneity problem. Or some fields call this assumption the same assumption as conditional ignorability assumption. So it's ignorable, like the, the endogeneity relationship is ignorable, conditional on X. Uh, basically, they are the same thing. And I'm going to call this conditional independence because it's most, I think it's neutral and it delivers the idea uh, the, the, the best. So I'm going to consider that. In many cases, uh, the correlation between in D and Y, I uh, goes away after controlling for covariates. So the, my favorite example is, example is that consider, uh, consider ice cream sales, ice cream sales, I'll call this say A, is ice cream sales and B is uh, ski Google sales. I think I have explained it earlier uh, in, a, in, a, in, the, in, in the classroom. And obviously they are negatively correlated. That's clear. In summer, ice cream sales increases, but ski Google sales decreases. And, and in winter, it goes the other way. So in that sense, they are negatively correlated. However, this uh, correlation, however, if you uh, control for the temperature, the weather, the correlation will disappear. So the correlation between ice cream sales and ski Google sales is because of the weather. There is no other dark channel, like they do not share factories, they do not share uh, their materials. So there is no reason for them to be correlated other than the weather. So 
for example, you can think it as A is a function of weather and other factors. And B is another function of weather and uh, other, say A others, I will call this uh, A others and B others. If A others and B others are not correlated, A and B are not correlated conditional on uh, weather. This is the idea. So ice cream sales depends on uh, weather and say uh, milk, the price of milk, price of sugar, and ski goggle sales depends on weather and the price of plastic and plastic of rubber. And then, uh, and if the price of milk and price of plastic are uncorrelated, then they are uncorrelated after controlling for weather. This is the idea, right? In this case, uh, in this case, we call the weather uh, as the confounder, confounder, confounding factor, or more commonly, confounding factor or confounder. Uh, so you may like you may have listen. You may you may have seen this confounding factor uh, later in many cases. Or example B, example. Second example, uh, you can think about in this case is say D is college attendance, college degree, and Y I is earnings. Let's think about suppose suppose that D is determined by family income and test scores and your motivation and luck, like say luck in uh, the admission or other processes. So we say D is a function of family income, test scores, motivation, and luck. Then uh, the problem here is, so we observe F and T, but not cannot observe motivation and luck. If motivation was observed, and uh, su suppose that also it is easy to assume that, assume that luck is uh, independent of everything else, including your earnings. So luck is literally, uh, liter literally a luck. So uh, it, it, has, it, it has no correlation with anything. It's pure luck. If you observe M, then your decision D uh, is selected based on determined by on observables F, T, and M, and a pure random shock, a pure random error. So we call this assumption as selection on observables in labor economics. But the problem is, however, we usually do not observe M. So uh, selection is based on unobservables. Like, so what matters is unobserved, unobserved variables that are correlated with Y. Don't observe Y and it is correlated with the potential earnings. So if you are more motivated, academically motivated, then it implies your earnings potential will be higher. So itself implies some, some different potential outcomes. Therefore, so these are two examples where conditional independence assumption, how to interpret conditional independence assumption. So in the first example, it's a clear example of uh, conditional independence. And second example, I tried to explain why it is called selection on observables. And this is an example where the assumption does not hold. Uh, so then, if uh, the conditional independence assumption holds, 
then we have this equals to this so as long as you you as long as you as long as you uh, condition on d equals to d uh, like as long as you have x in the condition d is irrelevant d is irrelevant let's put it this way so so having d or not does not matter so this is uh, the implication of conditional independence assumption and you can say the same thing for y equals y zero but it's it's not it's difficult so and from here it is easy to see what's going on and um, for the CIA assumption to hold, you have to include as many covariates as possible. And there are some examples where the, the conditional independence assumption holds, um, holds like uh, conditional on some observables, and then you may apply this idea. Uh, I will continue in the next video.